Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on selecting a post hoc test in SPSS. Post hoc tests are pairwise comparisons that are often made after conducting a variety of inferential statistical procedures. One of the more common procedures is ANOVA, so that's the one I'll be demonstrating here, and I'll be reviewing some of the popular post hoc tests and their characteristics. So I have here a data view in SPSS, and you can see I have three independent variables, uh, duration, duration of treatment, 6, 12, and 18 week, uh, the emphasis of the treatment, substance use, depression, and trauma, and gender. And I have one dependent variable, symptom level, which represents a general symptom level for the participant uh, after the treatment has been provided. So a lower score on the symptom level indicates fewer symptoms. So first I'm going to set up an ANOVA, so be analyze, general linear model, univariate, and you can see I already have this populated, but I'll move these values back. Uh, clearly, uh, symptom level is going to be the dependent variable. And the fixed factors I want to look at for this analysis, since we're going to be looking at post hoc tests, will be group, which is the duration, has three levels, 6, 12, and 18, and emphasis, which also has three levels. I'm not going to include gender in this analysis because a post hoc test will not run if there's only two levels of an independent variable. So moving through the buttons here on the right, I'm going to leave the model as full factorial. The contrast is they are by default. Uh, plots do a uh, horizontal axis for duration and for emphasis and then horizontal axis for duration, a separate line for emphasis. I'm going to skip post hoc for just a minute and I'll come back to it. Uh, I'm not going to save any new variables and for options uh, display the means for uh, all the different categories here on the left. And I'm going to compare main effects run homogeneity tests and estimates of effect size. So now taking a look at the post hoc dialog box. So I want to run post hoc tests for duration and emphasis, so I'm going to move these both over. I'm going to uncheck different tests here. I'll check them off as I go through them. Now normally in a situation like this, you would select one uh, post hoc test and run it. You'd select the best one. I'm going to select several just to demonstrate how they function. Uh, the first one is LST, which stands for Least Significant Difference. And this post hoc test is not ideal because it does not control for type 1 error inflation. So we would say the LSD is liberal, meaning the probability of a type 1 error rate is high, as opposed to conservative, where the type 1, the probability of a type 1 error is low. The next one I'm going to check off is the Bonferroni, which is a good post hoc test for controlling for type 1 error, and it has good power, statistical power, when the number of comparisons is low. So the term statistical power means the ability to detect a difference that's really there. Now if you want to control for the type 1 error, but you have a large number of comparisons, the Tukey post hoc test is a better choice. Another popular post hoc test is the REGWQ, which does a good job of controlling for type 1 error and retains good statistical power. 
the REGWQ is not good when the group sizes are different. So let's take a look at two post hoc tests that are better at dealing with different group sizes. The first is Hochberg's GT2, and the second is Gabriel. So if the group sizes are slightly different, then Gabriel is a good selection. If there is a greater difference in the group sizes, the Hochberg's GT2 is a better choice. From here, I'm going to click Continue. And they'll go ahead and conduct the ANOVA by clicking OK. You can see here are the results of the ANOVA. See the sample sizes are all equal uh, across group and emphasis. Now, Levine's test is significant, which warrants taking a closer look at the data. But I want to focus here on the results of the post hoc test. So you can see on the test of between subjects effects that emphasis is not significant, but duration is significant. And also duration times emphasis is significant. So moving down to the post hoc tests, as you see there's a title for this section. First we have the comparisons for group. And if we look at uh, Tukey, we can see that between the 6-week and 12-week group, we do not have statistical significance. There's no statistically significant difference between those two groups. But between 6 and 18, there is. And between 12 and 18, there is. And even though the significance levels are different for all these different post hoc tests, except for the last two, where the results are the same, the conclusions we would draw are all identical. So again, for the LSD, which is a more liberal uh, test, and of course the remaining are more conservative, uh, again, it's between 6-week and 12-week, there is no statistically significant difference, but there is for um, 6 and 18, and there is for 12 and 18. And that is the same result for the remaining stock test as well. And as I mentioned before, of course, you would select uh, usually just one post hoc test uh, based on the characteristics of your research design and your data and interpret just those results. And of course, in this case, though, we did get the same, uh, we drew the same conclusion from each of the post hoc tests although many of the significance values were different. Now that was duration. This is emphasis, uh, which of course is substance use, depression, or trauma. And as you can see, all these significance levels are different except for the last two post hoc tests. But the conclusion we would draw here is also the same which is there's no statistically significant difference between substance abuse or substance use and depression, substance use and trauma, or depression and trauma. All these results are not statistically significant because they're all greater than 0 0.05. And then moving down to the graphs, you can see there's a large dip here from 12 week to 18 week and there's a slight dip from 6 week to 12 week. And of course the greatest difference between 6 week and 18 week. And then for emphasis, the substance use emphasis was associated with a lower score in the symptom level, but not by much. And there's barely any difference between the depression and trauma emphasis. And then this last graph, we see 6, 12, and 18 week and substance use, depression, and trauma and how they plot. So again, what really stands out here is how these scores are lower for the 18 week 
level of the group independent variable. I hope you found this video on selecting post hoc tests in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.